Hey y'all, so I have a, we can walk through the flower garden into the vegetable garden and then um, I'll show you what not to do. Um, even though it was very sweet, my husband was very kind this weekend and we have bought one of these. Oh my god. Flame weeders. Um, to... Just because it takes so much time for me to weed everything. Um, I don't have the time to do all that. Especially with the three littles. So, um, he hooked that up. And then, um, he tested it out. Over here. See? It did pretty good. And that was probably an hour's worth of work that I don't have to do now. So, awesome. But, happens when we get in the vegetable garden. Herb spacing. First we'll walk through the flower garden. This is my cut flowers. I do think that this is squash because I did not plant this here. Um, last fall I planted some squash to try and get one more harvest before winter. And I think uh, the, that it was already too cold, even though it doesn't really get that cold. I think it was already too cold to germinate the seeds. So I think these are the squash, and I don't even remember which squash it was. Um, I put some overflow tomatoes in here, of course, because why not? Um, straw flowers. I planted a bunch more of those for fall. Um, all my calendulas all dried up. It's that brown down there. They just don't do well here, um, only in spring, and I can probably plant them again in late fall. And I might be able to even keep them over winter if we don't get a frost again. Um, but this is where my flowers and herbs live. This is, uh, in the spring, tulips and daffodils. Sorry if you can hear the airplane. Um, we live next to, or nearby, a uh, Hunter Army airfield. Um, but this is Cleome, Gomfrina. Um, this is a Mexican torch sunflower, Celosia, Dahlias. Um, this is called Stock. It's a really great filler if you're going to do cut flowers. Um, we had a bunch of it, I planted a bunch more. We want to get bees. I have all the equipment. I just don't have the bees yet. So look forward to that. Oh, there's bees all over. Um, here's some roses. Here's that show your stripes rose that's starting to have a blossom. I already cut the other ones for bouquets. Um, this one's a white one. This one's called they're all from um jackson and perkins this one's called pope john paul i'm pretty sure it's a white one. Ooh, look at this tomato it's doing pretty good it's looking pretty wilty there's all my tags from my jackson and perkins roses that's where i got them they are expensive but they do really well i've never had a problem with any of them they grow fast. I mean, these are the ones I just got probably two months ago. They grow fast. Um, here's one. Um, when it starts doing this, you see how it's got this one really long, tall, the bush is down here, and it's got this one really long, tall stalk to this. Well, when more of these start to flower, I would like to have probably another one or two start to open before I cut it for a bouquet. But, and I'll probably only cut it around here for a bouquet because I put them in uh, big wide mouth mason jars. Um, but then I would cut it all the way back to probably way down there by that leaf down here. So I'd cut two feet off um, because then it'll stop the growth there and it'll push the growth out in other places. So it won't be such a weird long tall stalk. Um... Oh my god, something is eating this, and it's got a perfect bite. 
I wonder what that is. Maybe I'll have to spray this with some neem oil. Um, that's crazy. They made it look like Swiss cheese. It doesn't look like a caterpillar. Caterpillars have more... I don't know. Huh. Good to spray that. I have to start a weekly spray schedule because I don't have one. Now it's just kind of if I see it, but I should probably do it before then. Um, all my herbs are covered here. I have to weed them out. These are my old rose bushes. See, if you don't cut the long gangly ones you'll have long gangly ones um so this fall since this one is so long and gangly i think i'm gonna cut cut it like right there cut that all off the top um then we have these roses these are old roses too i got these ones last year I don't remember their name. They were on the clearance section at Lowe's. So I brought them home because they looked like sticks, you know. So I brought them home and nursed them back. And then have beautiful roses this year because nobody wanted them the year they looked like sticks. This is balsam. I grow it every year. It bushes out. It looks awesome. It's great for bees. And oh, see, there's a bee right now. Um, bees butterflies, um, hummingbirds, all the pollinators seem to love these, as well as echinacea. If you have a pollinator problem, you should plant one or the one or the other of those. Um, Celosia is another great bee one. This one's called coxcomb. It looks like a fuzzy brain. Um, or there is a pompous plume, which has this kind of flower. But they're really good self-seeders, so they'll come back. It's just like amaranth. Uh, but great pollinator attractor. There goes a butterfly. This is another rose that I got. Um, it looks a lot like the pink one, only it's yellow and red. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, but I don't remember. I got this rose a long time ago when I first started gardening. Probably like five or six years ago. Um, I don't know why it's so small still. Uh, but... It's beautiful. Don't remember the name. Don't remember where I got it. I didn't pay attention to stuff like that back then. Oh, yes. Look at this one. This is going to be a beautiful one for a cut base. This is a dahlia. I love them. They don't grow great here. Like, they grow skinny and small. They do better um, in zone, like, five, six, seven. They probably do great. Um... But eight and nine are pushing it. Probably anything over that, too. Uh, we can grow stuff like this, though. The uh, canna lilies, they grow awesome. I have variegated ones, yellow ones, red ones, orange ones. More dahlias. See how its leaves are turning yellow and it's just burning up? It's just too hot here and humid. So lots of stuff doesn't grow very well. Oh, I'm excited to see this. This is called um, Blaze of Glory, I think. It's from Jackson and Perkins. It's a climbing orange rose. So we'll see how that looks. It is hot. Okay. So here's where the deer were eating the other day. This is uh, cut flowers of zinnias and cosmos. Um, there was a bunch of sunflowers. The deer have been eating the elderberries so I may have to find a fence to put those in oh it looks like the deer came back and ate some zinnias too look at that chewed up oh yeah they're just chewing on all the zinnias that's sad that I won't get to enjoy them hopefully there's enough we can both enjoy them is a cup of coffee.
this time I made it half of the pour over strainer is the coffee. And this time, I haven't got any comments yet that I've seen on which one I should try. So this time I'm trying Bananas Foster. So, earlier I tried the chocolate orange. That was delicious. It tasted very much like orange. A little bit like chocolate. Um, slightly watery though in coffee land. So I added more grounds this time. Almost double the amount I had last time. And then we'll see if this is stronger. But I love coffee. Um, when we go on vacations, that's what I do. Um, every morning I will look for um, bakeries so I can try baked goods. Uh, plus if they're like fresh baked and you can see people making them. But um, we'll go to bakeries and we'll have uh, fresh baked goods and coffee. And that's my favorite thing. I love flavored coffees. Um, all coffee, really. Let's see. So, the Bananas Foster one. Hi, Jada. Is... It's a little weird. Um, you taste the banana. It's... Kind of like a banana nut muffin. Um, it doesn't really taste sweet like I would think bananas foster would. Um, but it tastes like a banana nut muffin with coffee. It's pretty good. I don't think I'd get it again. I really like that chocolate orange one better so far. Um, but I think I'm going to go outside and collect eggs. Um, and then we'll try another coffee again in the morning. There was something else I was going to tell you, and now I don't remember what it was. I'll be back. So it was too hot and too bright earlier to walk through this garden, so I went inside. Somebody was calling me to a little person, so I went inside and then came out now to do it now because it's perfect time. The sun's behind the clouds, and it's like 6 o'clock, so. Um, this is sad because I haven't had a lot of time to work on it um, but our zucchini the plants look great but um, this one they've been looking like down here looks like vine bore um, you can usually tell when it splits like this um, can you see that when it splits like this it's the vine bore going up in there to eat the plant um, so I'm gonna have to rip <clears throat> rip those out tonight and um, I have some in the back that uh, I sell starter plants for three dollars two or three dollars depending on their size and they've gotten too big in the pot so I'm just gonna take all the starter vegetables that I have for the spring season and plant them out back where in a long row that I'm just making room for because these ones have had issues and already sucked out the nutrients here so we're gonna start somewhere else but um, these are my onions. I planted them in February or beginning of March. Um, they've started to die back, but a lot of them, they look really good if you can see in between the grass that I need to pull out. Um, <clears throat> um, I need to also dig up some of this celosia so I can save it. Um, and put them um, in pots either for sale or for to put them in the flower garden um, Especially this one. This one's really pretty. I don't have very many of these. I have lots of these hot pink ones um, And so more zucchini I might leave uh, This one even though it looks I don't know. I'll have to check. It looks like got here too. Actually, It looks like it got into all of them Let's See um, But it's still got fruit and it's got some more blossoms and some new growth so I don't really want to rip this one out just yet um, we'll see what I can do for that maybe I can spray it or um, inject it with some neem 
I mean, uh, BT. I have these, um, this is the Richmond Green Apple, uh, cucumber. I have, oh, there's one right here. Oh, maybe not. So, see, I have some over on the stand. I'll show you what they look like. They're round, like a green apple, instead of, uh, elongated like a regular cucumber. And then we have the lemon. Um, I've had the pickling bugs in these, so uh, what I do now is when we pick them to harvest them, I set them in a bushel basket on the side of the stand for two days, and if uh, holes start appearing, then we throw them to the chickens, and if not, then they're good and have nothing in them. Um, see, here's a lemon cucumber. Isn't that cool? They don't taste like lemon, they're just yellow and look like a lemon. Um, and we have, oh, jeez. Then we have regular cucumbers. Come on, nails, there we go. Same thing, though, I set them next to the stand. And wait, <clears throat> and then wait and see if anything appears. i usually been picking them earlier like this, but this other one looks pretty good. I might just leave that one and see. Hopefully I'm not risking it too much. So cucumbers, onions, zucchini. On the other side here, oh, and we have yarrow. Isn't that pretty? I haven't read in my book what yarrow is uh, used for medicinally, but it's very pretty. I could always use it in my bouquets, but it was very hard to germinate. Um, I didn't get a lot of it. <clears throat> I plan on planting more for this fall. There's a couple summer squash in this mess of weeds over here. And then there's winter squash over here that I'm going to have to weed through. That giant thing is a weed. That is the biggest weed. We're going to check that out. That is the biggest weed I've ever seen. Um, there's some straw flower here. So I'm going to put in bouquets. Um, I have some zinnias in this corner. And I'm pretty sure this is a volunteer. No, because it's got these. Maybe this is just the lantern plant. It looks like a ground cherry, but ground cherries don't have this veining on the little thing. So, unless it cross pollinated with something, which is completely plausible because I didn't plant it here. So, that could have happened. Um, in here you can't really see, but there's, um, bitter melons, which no one in my family would be sad if something happened to them. <clears throat> they are really bitter, but they're really good for you. Um, if you look it up, there's a whole bunch of, uh, like it says, that fights cancer, it's good for your skin, your hair, your everything. Um, they call it the, uh eternal life melon or something like that um, yeah uh, so I saute it up with soy sauce and mix it in with if you mix it in with a bunch of sweet vegetables like carrots and peas and things like that um, and slice it thinner it makes it so that it doesn't taste so bitter just make sure you stab it with those other sweet vegetables This long grass makes me nervous, makes me scared that I'm going to find a snake. Uh, this last weekend, there was a coral snake in the garden, or well, over in the corner of the garden by the greenhouse. What, honey? You put what on? You're going to put on your sister's Halloween costume. Well, it's a good thing she's sleeping or she'd have a fit. Okay, we'll do it in a minute, minute after my video, okay? Yes, in a minute after my video. Um, I'm pretty sure this is pumpkins. I grow pumpkins every year, but we've never gotten a pumpkin. I am persistent, though. Don't give in. I will get pumpkins one year or another. I will. Here is the one summer squash that we have left. This looks like it's getting powdery mildew, but that's because it's hot and humid here, so um, same with the cucumbers. 
Uh, cucumber squash, they don't last very long. We can get a couple quick harvests out of them and then they're done. Unless we had a cool spring, which I haven't met one of those in years. So, um, frog egg eggplants. These are alive from last year. This one, that one, that one. Um, I've showed you before. They have these little, these little eggplants. I'll do a video if we get enough of them, but um, I have a few people who like to buy them as soon as I have them. Like a call and pre-order them so that they can have them. We really like them too because they keep from getting really slimy. Yeah, pick the yellow one off, it's trash. They keep from getting really slimy when you cook them. They still stay a little crisp, but um, it has the taste and not the sliminess, so it's really good. Um, but there's a couple here. No, don't eat that, honey. Because we gotta cook it. And I seen one of these eggplants had a, a regular eggplant. Regular. Well, not super regular. It's like a little ribbed one. Um, is it yellow? I don't want a yellow one. The yellow ones are no good. Okay. I planted all these. Um, I tried to save them. Planted them in January. Put them out here in February. It's been three months and still nothing. Four months since I put them out here. They're not going to do anything. They're going to wait until it gets super hot and then they're going to set seed. A few of them already have, but they're not doing anything. So I should rip them all out. I could probably take the cabbage leaves and make something even though they're not cabbage heads. I can't really sell them, but I can make something out of them. Or cut them up and fry them up for ourselves. Maybe I'll do that. We'll have it one night for dinner. Um, these beds uh, had carrots and beets and uh, lettuce in them. This year what I'm going to do is I'm going to use over here where we had lettuce and kale in the long bed. I'm going to put all radishes in there. And then I'm going to do all carrots in all five beds. And then I am going to probably put beets on the ends where the cucumbers are and the zucchini are. Um, and then I'm going to do lettuce. Um, probably all out back in the raised beds. Well, there, I'll show you. Probably out back. And kale probably all out back or up here in in this long row right here because there's already kale there and kale there so maybe I'll put this one this way. Um, and then I'll keep the eggplant because that usually stays for the winter and I'm going to redo this all over again I'm going to redo the broccoli and cauliflower and all that I'm going to do it for this fall which should make it because it will be cold enough so um and then we have these boxes of this is horseradish in this box um when i dig it up this fall i think i'm gonna put it into a bigger space i don't really know where i'm gonna put it i need something bigger than these boxes though this is ginger which reminds me I need to get garlic. Um, when I first got this in the mail, I kept calling it garlic because I was thinking in my head, I need to get garlic, I need to get garlic. So I kept calling it garlic. My friend's like, really? Really, that's some weird looking garlic? Ginger, this is ginger, guys. I know that. And turmeric, which is funny because when I moved in, my neighbor gave me a plant, a plant with like this really pretty flower in it with leaves that looked exactly like this and come to find out it's in the turmeric family so um and it could be a white turmeric but that's what the root is it's like a yellowish white or more white it's not the orange turmeric but 
after research I found out it could be white. There's all different colors. There's even a blue one that I want to get. It looks really cool. I don't know if it dries blue, like if you'd have a blue powder. Guess I gotta grow it and find out. This is where I have my corn up here. My disappointment corn. Um was in these few rows up here. One, two, three, four, probably five rows had corn. Um, I'm gonna dig out some of this celosia and put it in pots and move it. Then I'm gonna have my husband flame weed this whole section up to here because these are our okra. Oop. These are our okra. We have regular okra. And then there's some burgundy okra in here and some orange okra. And what's funny is they look different by their stems. Like you, here, I'll show you, find another one. This one's a regular, a green one. The Clemson Spineless. It's green, right? So it's a regular. This one is a burgundy. You see how it's spineless, it's burgundy. Oh my God, huge mosquito. Fix it, my bad. Okay. And then, um, I'm not sure, but I thought there was orange, which might be these, this one, or I might not have got any orange, but I thought there was orange too. It could look like the red. I will have to find out when uh, it all comes up and I start harvesting it. And check it. Remember how I told you my husband flame weeded? Well, it's awesome in these really big spots. Like, he did a great job. And then you come up on stuff like this. Which, um, this was a day lily. Right here. So, no one anymore. Good thing it'll come back next year, hopefully. And... He did right there. See? Not bad. Looks good. It looks all dead. He didn't get anything. And then, when we come over here, since I'm going to show you the peppers. These, this is how I like to do it, is lay down the cardboard. I haven't got enough cardboard to cover, see? None of this side of the garden has any cardboard. Only this half of the garden has started to get cardboard. So, cardboard, awesome. Flame weeder near vegetables, no. Someone got a little too close with the flame weeder. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? Yeah? You want to come out to the garden and I show you? He hasn't been out here since. And I guess when he originally flame weeded, it didn't look like that. But then yesterday when I came out, or Monday, um, yeah. The ones he got awful close to, you could definitely tell which ones those ones were. But we'll start here, I guess, and I will show you my peppers. These are all hot peppers. These are all hot peppers. Um, our sweet peppers are out back. I keep them separated because we have some that look the same, and I don't want to mix up the sweet and the hot because that could be really bad. So um, these are ahi dula, which I'm in looking. Uh, said it was like a habanero or in the habanero family. Or something like that but so it's something about sweet so I don't know if it means like sweet and hot but I got these seeds from a woman um, I met at a farmers market she said that they were awesome peppers and I needed to grow them and then she mailed them to me the seeds so I grew them this year and this is what I'm waiting for I'm gonna send them to work with my husband because he has someone who likes hot peppers just in case they are hot, because if they're hot, you don't want them. I'm not a hot pepper person. These little ones right here are my ahi pineapples. 
Um, they're not doing as well as the rest of them. I don't know why these ones are struggling so much. Um, I mean, they're growing fine, but they're not, they don't look as good as the rest of the peppers. And then these are the regular habaneros, the lightning habanero mix from Baker's Creek. Um, they were doing fine before somebody blasted them, but it's already got new growth on these little nodules, so I'm hoping that this will be okay. And we got banana peppers. I'm gonna have to pick and pickle. Um, and then from here over, it's all jalapenos. Mama. What, honey? There are regular jalapenos and lemon jalapenos and orange jalapenos in there. So, um, on two different kinds of regular jalapenos. These are an actual hot pepper that I like. These are the Sugar Rush Peach. Um, they are spicy, but they also have like a fruity tinge to the spiciness. So it makes it enjoyable. These are the Chinese five peppers, five color peppers. They turn, they start out purple like this. Then they turn to this whitish color, gray. Um, and then they'll turn, well, those aren't quite there. Then they turn like an orange color and then they turn red. Um, so they're, I call them mood ring peppers. Uh, they're all really pretty. They're really hot too. I send my hot peppers to work with my husband and he gives them to a guy who really enjoys hot peppers so that way he can tell me if they're good or not or if they're not spicy or super spicy or stuff like that. Um, these are my lemon drops. These are also one of my favorites that I will actually eat and enjoy. I want to make a lot of powders and hot sauce and a bunch of stuff out of this lemon drop pepper. Okay, it looks like a Christmas in there. Ornaments hanging everywhere. Um, these are something new I'm trying this year. They're called uh, Cubanelli's. They're like a mild hot pepper, I guess. We'll see. They don't know what they taste like. Um, then we have the Shishitos. We love some Shishitos. I need to grow some more, but they have a lot of peppers. See, we just harvested last week and there's already all these. So, and then there's a couple on here and a bunch on there. They're really good, really prolific. Um, awesome. Looks like I'm going to have a harvest for this weekend if anybody who's local is watching and wants to try some. Since we just had some, I'll share this harvest. Um, then we have our poblanos, which haven't gotten big yet. Like, at least not like the ones you find in the store, which I know that a lot of peppers don't. Um, what are you doing, eating mint? Okay. But they're, they're about this big. Paisley, watch out, please. Let's see. So they're getting better. I think it's just maybe the size of the plant, too. Maybe once the plants get bigger and stronger, they'll have more fruit. Um, and then we have these... Pink tiger. And this, I don't know how to say it. It's like Buetu Mala, something or other like that. I really like when the foliage is different, like these dark, dark purple leaves. I think that's really pretty along with of course the fish peppers y'all know are my favorite because the way they look I haven't had yet to eat them or include them in any recipes but I mean even the fruit is variegated 
Come on, man. Can't get much cooler than that. Look at that one. That's beautiful. Plant and fruit. Gorgeous. More lemon drop peppers. I um, planted these because these were some that had the tags washed off, so I didn't know what they were until they started growing the peppers, and now I know they're lemon drop peppers. Um, so these are what I just made into the powder, and I'm gonna need a lot more, obviously, but awesome. I don't know what these are called. If somebody knows what these are, you could let me know. That'd be awesome. Um, and then we have a bunch of, these are called uh, Brazilian starfish peppers. They'll turn red when they're ready. Not ready yet, almost. There's a bunch on there though. We have a corner full of those. And then there's some Cosmos in here. I can eat them. No, don't eat those. Those are hot peppers, baby. Can... You'll be sorry if you do. I Got some flowers get, in this I can corner. Them out, them out, out, outside. And these are called hot Hungarian wax peppers, which are the same spice as a jalapeno. So we throw them in with our jalapenos, and it's really cool when we have the when we actually wait for the jal the green jalapenos to turn their ripened colors and we have the yellow, orange, yeah. green, and black jalapenos in a, mm -hmm. a mixed little basket. It looks pretty. Yeah. Um, but that's about it for the hot peppers and, and out front here in the garden. Mosquitoes are crazy out here. Isn't it funny how the volunteers are always the strongest and most beautiful and hardy plants? Paisley. Come on, Paisel. No. Okay, I'm going inside. The bugs are eating me. She'll come in. Oh, I forgot to tell you that over here's the, well, I mean, I briefly mentioned that we have um, this Jericho kale, blue kale, and some ragged jack kale. The ragged jack's almost done. It's getting pretty hot. Same with all this other kale. It's not really growing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some collards that I've been picking and harvesting over there. Um, and then we have some sunflowers over here in the back, which the husband also flame weeded to wiltiness. See where the weeds are? Nice, healthy looking plants. I love you too, honey. Where he flame weeded. Well, I cut some for bouquets because they're starting to go downhill. But these ones haven't uh, put their flowers out yet, and their leaves are starting to dry up and look very bad. Um, this was one of my favorite. It was one of those dark, dark red ones, and uh, I don't think she's gonna do any more. Hopefully, plants want to live, you know, so they try hard to live. So hopefully, it'll be resurrected um this is a uh, job's tears i don't really check on this plant but because it's the it was said that these beads could be used for like rosary beads and that they'd be all these different colors and stuff and i mean they kind of are there's a blue one and a brown one i just it looks pretty so i wanted to grow it basically all it was it's like a it's in the corn family it's a kind of grass it does add interest but that's about it okay oh and my apple tree which has never had apples until now look one one two three four five it's so so cool I was cutting flowers off of it this spring, too, because I've had it eight years, about, maybe six, and it's never done anything, and I was always told that it's too hot here for apples, so I always thought, you know, it's just a pretty flowering tree, 
until now. And I have apples. It's not going to be enough to share, but I got apples. <laughs> it's not even enough for each of us to have one. There's seven of us, six of us who can eat solid food. So it's not even enough for that. Um, but that's the front garden. An update. Hopefully this weekend I will have enough videos stacked up that can just load so I can get to this garden and get it cleared out because we don't really do anything in January, I mean July and August. It's just too hot and I'm just done with it about that point, which is right now. All the bugs, there's so many bugs in everything and so we'll just be harvesting what we have already established and clearing out and prepping the beds for fall because I will be making a video probably mid-July-ish if I can wait that long. But I'll be making a video of fall preparations and picking out seeds of what I want to plant then. But I have to start getting all this ready. The peppers, we've decided they're going to stay. We're going to try and cover them. We covered a lot last year. I'll have to show you those uh, with great success. Uh, they have fruit now. They're doing awesome. They don't look so great. But they're growing and they have fruit. So I can't complain. So we're going to try and build frost covers for these beds up here. Um, to protect all these peppers. Home my chick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Out back at our overflow, um, there's this volunteer ground cherry, which we've staked up so it's not running along the ground like the other one. Um, I'm going to have to stake up more of it because it's getting pretty big here it's got lots it's not as big as that other one that we just found but um the stivers had a video recently of the ground cherries that's the size they're supposed to be they're pretty small um here's one and here's one that's almost ripe see its husk is kind of yellow but it's also kind of green when it's kind of green the fruit's going to be a little more tart Mm. It's still good though. There's another one. It's yellow. This one's even smaller. Look how tiny this is. They're my daughter Paisel's favorite. So I grow them for her. I wasn't going to grow them this year because they took too long last year. And now they're just popping up everywhere. So I bet you some birds got some. Or the chickens because they were out last year. But. This is the overflow pepper, well this side is the overflow peppers. I did have uh, flowers in these beds, but I moved them this spring um, for more food. And I, these all uh, came from last year. I dug them up this fall and put them in pots and put them in the high tunnel um, to save them. And then I took them out and it has all these peppers. I mean, look how great it's doing. Some of them have where we had to cut off the frost or the cold where it got really cold. Uh, we didn't actually catch a frost, but it got down to like 36, 34. And some of the peppers got damaged, so I dug them up and put them in the high tunnel. But obviously it didn't matter. We just cut off the parts that had the damage. And they're doing great. So this is why I think that I can save those other ones if we build frost boxes big enough to cover them. Like like a low tunnel for the whole thing mm, frost box and then we'll have all these peppers and our plants out front will be this big so they'll be established like this and hopefully we'll be getting these good big sized peppers this is I'm pr not positive but I'm pretty sure that this is a Tanzanian pear melon from last year um, they taste really weird okay I grew a lot of weird things last year and this Tanzanian pear melon okay it tasted like a pear but it also tasted like a cantaloupe 
and it was like this a little bit bigger than a ground cherry maybe like the size of a regular cherry it was green and purple striped and it's just the weirdest thing ever i hope that this fruits so i can share it with you more intensely because it was nuts along with what i think these volunteers are is the kiwano melon the horned cucumber it's these i didn't plant this but I'm pretty sure that's what it is because I last year I smashed a bunch for the chickens. Um, so I have one there and one over here. And they grow great because they're from Africa. So we have pretty much same hot, sandy conditions here. This is my soil before amended. It's sandy. Um, so, but that's crazy too. It's... A, looks like a cucumber it's spiked and it's green and then when it ripens it turns a orange yellowish um, you cut it open it looks like a cucumber but it's lime green like lime green jello uh, it's kind of slimy because it's also known as like a jelly melon so it's like jelly on the inside um, and it tastes like banana cucumber spiky orange color lime green inside tastes like banana the whole time you're eating it, you're like, what's going on? So, hopefully those will be ripe and we can share that intensity too. But, um, then we have the rest of the peppers. And overflow the extra tomatoes that didn't get sold. A uh, starter plant, so I put a fence up. Um, then I have my regular plants right here. Hydrangea that I use for cuttings. Uh, this is a, called a bougainvillea. Um, it has really pretty flowers. It started flowering on the other side better. I'll show you. It grows really well here, too. Uh, it'll be all those flowers all over soon. The jasmine's just starting to die off, but when that flowers, the whole yard smells like jasmine, and the, these flowers are all over it everywhere. Um, but same when that pink flower starts going, it'll be all over this whole side. It's beautiful. I just need, I did have a climbing rose on this side to cover for fall, but I have spring and then summer, and then I need something that goes here for fall. Does anyone know a really good climbing plant that flowers in the fall? Let me know below. This is pineapple sage. Look at this beast. I bought it in a pot, and that was like six inches. And it is this whole plant. Yes. I cut it back every year and it's just huge. I use it for teas. It smells delicious. My daughter eats it. These are paprika peppers. That's what we have in the smoker right now, which I gotta go check on after. But we have, I had 50 plants. I don't think I have that many now. But there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. Oh, thirty, thirty one. Somewhere around thirty. Give or take. But those are all paprika peppers. And hopefully we'll be able to figure out this smoked paprika and I can make my own because I buy like one of those little jars like every two months. Oh, and I plan to do these peppers. These are, I'm pretty sure these are the Hubbard stuffed peppers. Um, they really didn't get much bigger than this last year. And I also have a few more little peppers like these. And I think I have a pimento pepper. Um, I plan on doing like little pickled pepper jars with these. Oops. So we'll see how that goes too. I gotta find a recipe for it and then I'll probably video that too. Chickens. <laughs> 